Hi and welcome to module 4 in this self-help program for sleep problems. We hope that you're now working on your sleep restriction and monitoring your sleep with the sleep diary every day. If you haven't gotten around to this, we recommend that you start sleep restriction before starting this module. If one week has gone by where you've had an average sleep efficiency of 85% or more, you can increase your sleep window by 15 minutes. Remember to insert these extra 15 minutes at your bedtime, while the time you get out of bed remains the same, as we talked about in the previous module. If you've not achieved 85% sleep efficiency, then you should wait to increase your sleep window. Since the previous module was so important, we'll start today by quickly summarizing the key points. With sleep restriction, you set up a sleep window, which is the time you allow yourself to be in bed and you are not to sleep any other place. This strict sleep window should be maintained regardless of how one sleeps at night or how you feel during the day. You must keep your sleep window the entire week, including the weekend. In the beginning, you very well might experience getting less sleep than you actually need. The consequence of this is that your sleep pressure rises gradually, giving you a higher sleep quality, with less time spent awake in bed trying to get to sleep. The goal is to raise your sleep efficiency, which is a basic fraction calculation based on your time spent sleeping in bed divided by the total time spent in bed, multiplied by 100. In this module, you'll learn a different technique that you can use in combination with sleep restriction called stimuli control. The essence of stimuli control is to teach your brain to understand that going to bed means going to sleep. To do this effectively, we're going to use your brain's ability to learn through association. If you started sleep restriction, you might have asked yourself, what should I do if I wake up at night and can't fall asleep again? And that's a good question. As mentioned earlier, it's best to avoid tossing and turning in bed for a long time. This is very often uncomfortable and unfortunately your brain can then associate your bed with feelings of frustration or even fear. It's important that sleep is not a performance because the harder you try, the more difficult sleep becomes. Therefore, we recommend the following. If you do not sleep in bed within 20 minutes, get up and do other things. Do activities like reading a book or a newspaper listening to music, or watching a relaxing TV show. It's important to avoid strong light sources and activities that make you more awake, like a fierce action film or polishing garden furniture. When some time has passed and you feel sleepy again, try going to bed. Repeat this process if necessary. Remember that it's better to be awake in your living room all through the night compared to tossing and turning in bed. We also recommend that you avoid closely monitoring a clock in this process. If you feel like 20 minutes have gone by, then that's good enough. Focusing on the clock may lead to the unhealthy performance mentality we mentioned earlier. Because the brain learns through association, it's also very important that you avoid other activities in bed, like work or entertainment. You're only allowed to sleep or have sex in bed. The fact that sex is allowed might surprise you, but that's because sex and sleep are actually connected to the same part of the nervous system that controls relaxation. You can start the next module when it suits you. A link can be found in the video description. Remember to maintain your sleep window, even when it might feel very demanding. The work you put into sleep restriction is the most important task to conquer your sleep problems. Good luck!